Hello, humans of the world. You are now tuned into Relations Podcast, where me and a new co-host, just like you, discuss our relations with ourselves, with each other, and our experiences. Are we ready to break the cycles? You know, the ones that live within our learned behaviors. Have you noticed the decisions you make subconsciously? The ones that lead you right back to where you started? Let's take on the healing journey together. Get on this PJ of unconventional conversations conversations and let's travel all the way through our lineage then let's break the cycles link by link ready let's do this hello 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 welcome to relations hello humans on the world we're back for another amazing episode i want to thank you guys for supporting me for listening again So we're going to do this again because, you know, we just got to bring it back to back with amazing topics. Um, So let's get right into it. So the topic in the episode today is called No Opposite Sex Friendships. And we're going to talk about how to build solid platonic relationships with the opposite sex, even with an ex. So before we get started, of course, I have to do the best part, which is introduce you to my VIP guest. And this one is super special because I I can't even call her VIP guest. I got to call her a sister. I got to call her like, I don't freaking know, one of the people like God sent into my life directly, chosen. And now I'm going to like share her with you guys. This is my friend, Dara. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> so, Nadara, thank you for being here and for having this convo. This is about to be really dope. I've been looking forward to this. Um, thank you for having me. I started all my episodes um, talking about how we met. So, do you have a little story of the first recollection you have of me in your life? I think we met maybe, I don't remember exactly when we met, to be honest, but I think we met maybe um, freshman year. Um, sometime I wasn't in classes with you, I don't think, but one of my friends was, and he was interested in you. So he saw you (laughs) and he was like, who's that girl with the, I won't say that part with the body and the the long hair. And so I was just like, oh, I don't know her. And you, we weren't in any classes together. So it was just like, his thing was he needed to get to know you now. And so I was like, okay, well, whatever. I moved on. But, you know, it's once he got to know you and started dating you, you know, obviously our friendship grew from there because he was one of my close friends. But um, just but I can't remember really any other the rest of the high school experience, not you not being there. So at some point we met and clicked. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I would agree. So I so by the way, this is high school, you guys. Um, This is not like uh, anything. So I met I mean. We were 13, 14 years old. Um, I do remember that experience with this person. Um, (laughs) And I'm so glad that it happened, even though our relationship was very short and not long-winded. At least I got like this whole slew of friends and people because of that relationship. I'm like so thankful for that. Um, I remember first meeting you, or not meeting you, but seeing you. And I want to have a moment. I don't think I've ever told you this. Um, but I, so I saw you and I remember just seeing like someone who was at that time, I should say at that time you fed into my insecurities, um, because I looked at you and I'm like, damn, she's just dressing how she wants to dress. This is at 14, you guys, she was dressing how she wanted to dress whenever she wanted to dress like it. She was walking around bold with like heels whenever she had a chance to wear them. And she <laughs> was just rolling up just like and my insecurity said like who is that like she's who this she's who whatever insecure things that you triggered in me is what I thought of you um until I got to know you and I'm like damn she's like bomb like she's one of the most Aww, confident like self-assured people I knew at that age especially um so I'm just so glad that we're here so oh, let's get you. Right- <laughs> of course so let's get right into it um I always start by defining the key words that we'll be using just so that we make sure that we're on the same page. So um, this is according to Google because Webster's Dictionary of 1828 was very long-winded and I didn't like it. So I went with Google. 
<laughs> um, so the first one is friendship. Um, friendship is a state of mutual trust and support between allied nations. The next word is platonic, a love or friendship, intimate and affectionate, but not sexual. And the next phrase really we're understanding is masculine, feminine energy. So feminine energy, which is the receptive, nurturing and passive force is understood as yin and masculine energy on the other hand, which is the assertive, direct action oriented force and is uh, defined as yang. So let's get right into it. It is often, right. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, um, it is often said that people of the opposite sex cannot be friends without the sex that is, I bet, to, I beg to differ. I believe it is one of a specific energy and a learned understanding that we can influence the dynamic to make it possible. Platonic friendships, even with an is definitely possible and favorable in many ways. From the female's perspective, come and learn how we have become experts in platonic relationships. So, Nadira, I'm going to say, like, you probably are the only other female I've ever met in my life to this day that has the same equal... And, and we're very different, right? But we're very much alike in that we're able, although we approach it in different dynamics, we're able to have platonic friendships very successfully. Um, yeah. So, the, what was that? I said I think we can separate the you know from friendship versus anything else. Yeah. So, what is the primary trait you believe is what makes you a master at platonic relationships with the opposite sex? Um, I think master is a strong word, by the way. <laughs> but I think, um. I think it would have to be just knowing, having boundaries and just knowing either what you came into the relationship with or where it's going. You don't have to necessarily uh, set verbal boundaries, but just in some manner. So like you and I obviously share a lot of male friends in the same crew um, of friends. And I think it's just an understanding that I guess this is what we are and it's, and it doesn't need to go any further than this. Or if you are dating someone, sometimes it does go further, but just know if you were friends before you were dating, chances are you can be friends after. So I think just having like the idea in your head, not putting any, not assuming somebody automatically just wants to date you or wants to be with you or wants to lay with you. I think a lot of people go into things with assumptions like, Oh, you know, he just mm -hmm. is trying to talk to me because of my body. I've seen people on the street and I just thought they, like you said, you're a cool person. You know, you're eclectic. There's something about you that I'm attracted to. Maybe not in a relationship, but I want to be your friend. It's kind of like that. Um, like when you're little kids, it's easy to make friends. Like, oh, you like this toy? I like this toy. Let's be friends. But we don't necessarily do that as adults. But platonic friendships, a lot of times for me anyway, start like that. Like, most of my platonic friends like, oh, you like this, um, you know, music artist. I like this music artist. Oh, you like this, you know, and it's, you have some commonality there and just not assuming yeah, that just because I, a guy wants to be your friend, you know, that he's trying to lay with you essentially. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a hundred percent right. I think another thing is the connection with your masculine and feminine energies um, and having that balance. And it's like a, an interesting balance, right? Because it's, it's hard to describe it. Like if you had to describe that, how would you describe it? Um, I don't know how I would describe masculine and feminine energy. I think, I think you'd have to just know yourself and know that we all have both. We both, we all have estrogen and testosterone in us. You know, we all, you know, you don't have to you know, put necessarily gender biases on people, like just because you are uh, a guy, you're going to do X, Y, and Z, or just because you're a female, you, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and this is both for um, for um, straight, gay, whatever. It's, it's the same thing. So I think a lot of people are like, oh, I have gay guy best friends or, and it's, you know, it's fine. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, because he's, no, it has nothing to do with that. Like I have gay, straight, whatever, all shades of, you know, <laughs> whatever um, friends and it, it never made right. a difference. So the masculine energy, I think 
I think it's like a false bravado a lot of people put on men. And I think the feminine energy is, again, another false bravado people put on females a lot of times. It's like, I'm not, I'm, and I'm also not super girly. I'll start with that. I'm a, I've am ai been a tomboy most of my life. Um, so that could be it too. I'm not super pretty girly. Like I can get dressed up. I can do the whole makeup and, you know, clothes thing, but I'm not super girly if that makes a difference. I don't know. <laughs> you're not you're not super girly you're not super girly and you're not super fe- feminine as well but you could do both and I feel like I I'm like that too like I could be super tomboyish and then I could be super girly because you were wearing heels at 48 so like in a way you were girly but not all the time you well, could that switch was more it so whenever you want that was more so because I just like being different so if someone else had something on I didn't want to have it on so I just, that was more so, I don't think it had to do with that woman energy or, because if you think about it, my mother didn't wear heels and stuff like that a lot. Like you never saw her in stuff like that. So it wasn't, I don't think it had anything to do with it. It was just something that was different than other people were doing at that time. Mm, mm, that's big. And so what do you think about like emotional detachment? Like, is that, do you think that that plays a part into having a platonic relationship? Emotional detachment, like what? Like not being, not having to feel like you're in a relationship with everyone you meet or. Right. Like more on the, uh, along those lines, like not everyone wants to, like, it doesn't have to be that deep (laughs) every single time. Like it doesn't have to need what we think the societal norms are, right? Like it's like, oh, well, you know, you're a man and I'm out here looking for a man. So you potentially have Plus to one. be partner, marriage, family type of person. Okay. So I definitely agree with that. So I think one thing with you and I, um, well, I'll speak for myself, but I never like growing up, I never was like, oh, I'm going to get married, have kids, have all of this. Like it wasn't in a dream that I needed this to survive. Not saying anything's wrong with that because I think it's beautiful if that's what you aspire to. But for me, it was never like a whole big, I guess, production of it. So I never, so when I met somebody, I met them as a person, as a human, in a sense. I didn't meet them as, Mm. oh, you're a potential suitor. So like a lot of people grow up with it, like the princess ideals and, oh, I'm going to have this huge wedding. I'm going to have, you know, ball game. That wasn't me. That absolutely wasn't me. So. Mm. even um, like meeting like my husband, it was just like, you're a cool dude. You know what I mean? Like just a random dude, but you're a cool dude. I'd like to get to know you because we may have similar interests. And that's how most of my, I think, well, not all of them, but a lot of my relationships started. So I'm friends with a lot of my exes. So, you know, it was because we were friends before or there was something in them I wanted to get to know. You know, when you're younger, sometimes you mistake that for, I want to be with them in a relationship. You know, because you're a teenager, you don't know any better. You have hormones, but, or you're, you know, an adolescent young adult. But I think just knowing, like, that you can still be friends with them after, because it's like, ah, maybe this didn't work out in this sense. So maybe we're not meant to be in a relationship, but we're meant to be friends. So I think yeah. that has, you know, a lot to do with the difference. Yeah. So, and that that's a perfect segue. So what are the principles to building a solid relationship with the opposite sex? One of them obviously is understanding to be human first and having friendships. Um, I think another one would be owning your sexuality. So I think this idea of like, you have to hump everyone you see, <laughs> or after you have sex, now come something else. Um, I think right. that's part of that. Um, what would be another one that you would think? Of? Um. Huh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, well, I have a list. So I have, I'll, I'll go with the list I have. So okay, owning your sexuality. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. owning your sexuality. Um, no judgment and understanding you're human first. Um, the third is honesty. and So tell me and don't lie to me is more valuable. And number four is boundaries, right? So establishing boundaries. So boundaries are very important. Um, the honesty, I'm I'm very big on honesty. So if you lie to me, it's just like, it's pointless. We're not, the friendships can't survive if you're lying to me. Like relationships come and go, people lie, do dumb stuff. But in a friendship, it's a different level of, I guess, trust for me. 
So now, and, and when I say relationships, okay, sorry. When I say relationship, I'm not talking about um, like marriage or anything like that because that's something different, but just like general relationships, like you're dating someone. Um, friendships, I feel like there's a unspoken honesty. Like if I'm your friend, I've, I'm trusting you with, let's say my private, my secrets. I'm trusting you with my business. I'm trusting you with so many different levels. So I think when, I think, I guess when you can, um, I don't know, when you can sit there, set those boundaries and both of you understand that, I think that makes all of the difference. Like I've had some people who they just don't get the hint. Like, no, they say, oh yeah, we can be friends. And it's just like, then they keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And it's like, we're not being friends if you keep trying to date me, you know what I mean? So you have to know when to cut (laughs) those people off too, you know? So you have to know when to just simply say like, okay, so you're going to play this friend zone until you think the opportunity arises. And those aren't like friends. Those aren't genuine people. They just want to, they want to be a suitor and there's nothing wrong with that, but you guys have to both understand that. So like my guy right. friends who are just friends, I don't have to worry about them hounding me in my DMs or anything like that. Talking about, Hey, you know what you're doing now? Like, come on. So I don't ever have to worry about that because they're friends. They can come to me for advice with their, you know, significant other and vice versa, or just we can hang out. Like I know you and I, we've had, I don't know how many over the years, like where the whole like crew got together, guys, girls, whatever, and all have been in like one big hotel room when we were young or, you know, a house together. And it's not like everyone would think like, oh, what happened there? It's like absolutely nothing. Even on freaking prom night when we were all together. Remember, like prom night, it's like all of us were together, not a thing happened because it's like because we were genuine guy and girl friends. And, you know, that's something I think all of our parents were comfortable with, you know, too, because right. it was never an issue with even our parents being young. And you're like, oh, I'm going over to so and so's house. And it's not like, you know, most parents are like, you're not going over to our guy's house. So this guy can't spend a night. My, you know, my parents were just like, uh, yeah, it's fine. You know, we know it's, you know, they're actually friends. So. Yeah. And it's, I would say that's like a big thing because I, I don't even remember it being like a weird thing or my mom ever bringing it up. Like it was never weird. It was almost like, oh yeah, I know you're friends with these guys. I know that there is nothing. So it was never like a question. Right. So it goes to show that our parents understood us in a different way. And I know that that wasn't the same for everyone. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I take that. Like, I'm grateful for that experience because it was never questioned, which gave me the liberty to just trust and respect each other. I think that mm-hmm. there's a lot of respect that happens when you just accept that, you know, I'm your friend and I'm not going to try to pursue you. I'm not going to try to take this to the next level because I respect the friendship more than anything else. Exactly. And I don't want to jeopardize it. You don't want to put this friendship in jeopardy because if you lose this person, it will be more harmful than trying to, you know, you know, date them or whatever and seeing what happens. So, you know, they're more valuable as an individual. I think also accepting being, being on, sorry to cut you off, but just also mm -hmm. accepting like if you're in a relationship too, accepting that your partner, whether like we're females, obviously, but if your guy, if your significant other has female friends also being mindful that, the way you see your guy friends, he may see his female friends and it's okay, you know? And if you have an issue, a genuine issue with it, discuss it. But for the most part, if he or she is like you, like-minded in that sense, where you guys have opposite sex friends, don't have an ultimatum for him, essentially. And then like have a double standard, like, oh, you can't have these girls around you. And then you come, you roll up with a, <laughs> a crew of guys, it's, you know, just have that same understanding and respect for each other too. Right. And and my my favorite quote is only because you can't do it doesn't mean I can't do it. Right. right. So people always project right. or sometimes can project their stuff on you. And it's like, oh, well, I just don't understand how you can just be friends with a man and nothing happens. And, you know, the jealous girlfriends. I mean, right. we dealt, exactly. we had a little bit of issues with that. Right. And it's like, uh, yeah, you can't do that. Right. But that doesn't mean I <laughs> exactly. do that. Like, I, I can definitely <laughs> I don't know what you think I am, but I could definitely separate the two. But yeah, I do see that a lot. Like there was a a lot of people who project different things like that. And they're like, oh, you know, I don't like you having guy friends or whatever. And it's just like, well, give me a good reason why. 
Like, give me an excellent reason why you don't like this particular friend of mine. You know, like if there's something, maybe I missed it. And it's usually, it boils down to like in past relationships, it boils down to, well, guys and girls can't be friends. Okay. I've known these people 20 some odd years at this point. So, you know, that's like saying, right, like, to me, right. it's just idiotic is saying your cousins can't be your friends. You know what I mean? Like if you have guy cousins, you can't hang out with them. But if you see these people as like your brothers or your family, like... It just doesn't matter, you know? But Yeah, it's just silly. I think it's just, you know, insecurities. Um, so what determines whether you are able to have a friendship after a relationship? I think for me, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, I just wrote three points here. I put um how the relationships ended, uh, the value of the connection, and whether there was a platonic friendship to begin with. So, yeah, so definitely I agree with all three of those. Um, Definitely. I think the biggest thing is definitely um, how the relationship ended. Like if it was if it ended. With them not like doing something where even a friend shouldn't do that to you or whatever, then, you know, if it was like something like abusive, whether verbally or um, physically, whatever, then that's not someone you need in your life as a friend either because through the relationship, that means they didn't value you as a friend in my head anyway. So also how it's, how the relationship started. So like I was saying earlier, um, some of my relationships started with me being friends first with the person and then getting in a relationship with them and sometimes getting back out of a relationship, you know, the back and forth thing people do. Um, but throughout it, if it was just like, I keep going back to this person for some reason, but I think it's because we have similar interests. And, you know, society tells us if someone matches you of the opposite sex this perfectly, you're meant to be with them. But in reality, it could just be you're meant, they're meant to be in your life, but maybe as friends. So like one of my absolute best friends, I dated him, you know, nearly married him. And then we were just like, one day we were just sitting there and we were like, what are we doing? We literally looked at each other and we were like, what, what are we doing? And we both were like, I don't know. It's like, you want to just try this friend thing out and not jump back into this again? And it worked out perfectly. And he's literally been my best friend for the God knows how many years since college. So, you know, it's that worked out perfectly in that sense. So you and we have clear boundaries. It's not like there's a jump back and forth. Um, You know, he's literally like family to my family now. Um, and my husband, you know, communicates with him. He's cool with him. So it's like things like that. And I can, you know, call him up and any time of the night or whatever in an emergency. And he can just tell his wife, like, hey, you know, Nadira's having this issue or whatever, you know, like, I'm just going to call. And it's not like this whole big, oh, Nadira this, you know, I've had some exes who were friends and they're like, Mm -hmm. why is she calling you in the middle of the night? Oh, why is she? And he's like, well, she's, you know, my close friend on my whatever and it's been an issue so i'm like oh they don't get like this dynamic this relationship so i'll respect that as well like if your significant other doesn't get it i'll back all the way up because i'm not going to be the one to ruin your relationship for my you know my selfish reasons like i want my friend or whatever you know so right yeah so so that's a perfect segue what are the benefits from being friends with an ex or just a man in general I think the benefits are like, usually when you're in a relationship with someone, um, they know a different side of you that maybe not a regular, I don't know, maybe, maybe not a regular friend would know, or they know the relationship side of you. So when you move on to the next relationship and you're, you know, you may be venting, complaining or whatever. And they're like, you know, you do this, right? And they can just like check you. Like, you know, in a relationship you do this or you disregard, like I've been told, you know, different things about how I disregard certain feelings or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, because, you know, I didn't think that mattered. It's like, well, it matters in a relationship. And to most normal people, it would matter. So they can check you on stuff you may not realize you do. And even your friends don't, like your regular friends who you've never been in a relationship with may not realize you do because they don't, you know, they're not there with you in, like intimately or in those, you know, moments. So um, I think the other benefit would be um, they they can see, I guess if you've been with someone and you were genuinely happy in a relationship, they can see with the next person if you're kind of genuinely happy with them. Like, you know, that beginning, that honeymoon phase of your, of any relationship. 
So they know what it was like in the honeymoon phase and then they know what it was like when it, you know, went downhill or ended or whatever. So it's kind of like they can help you say, hey, you know, this may be a good guy for you or, you know, or significant other, I'll say for you, you know, your face lights up when this happens or I notice, you know, this makes you happy or they do this that you always said you wish I did, you know, and they're doing this for you. So it can help you see a different perspective of your own relationships or just you as a person, you know, it's more um, like fully faceted. So like in a relationship and a friendship, having that duality, I think it makes a big difference. Like in terms of how, just how they know you, how they receive you and things like that. Yeah. I agree. That constructive feedback is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my call it, um, oh, you know, after the breakup and you like separate for a while, you come back and you have like the autopsy report, like the autopsy <laughs> report. Of the- um, and I always thought that was so cool. And I was like, yeah, I do that all the time. I didn't know that's what I was doing. Yeah. Right. But I do that all the time. I always go back to an ex or, you know, just in friendship and random talk, like, you know, what I've done better in the relationship or yeah. where do you feel to do more work on that constructive feedback from someone who has been in it with you right and is now out of it and is looking at it objectively can just be like you know what like yeah like maybe in your next relationship do more of this or less of that or you know and that could help you in your future and i think it's just part of self-development yeah so um huge mm-hmm. for men just period yeah and then just with men overall right like mm-hmm. when you're dealing with men and they're just looking at things differently from a female's perspective. Exactly. So I like to like my male friends to ask them just what is a man thinking? Like, okay, this is what this guy is saying. Like, what does that really mean? Exactly. Or what he means, right? Exactly. So, and it, I mean, I think um, it's a give and take with that because we've done that with some of our guy friends when they're like, oh, you know, she's acting irrational. She's doing this. And I'm like, yeah, you did this first. So she's not acting irrational. You were the asshole first. Like, let, let's put this in perspective of who you are. So, you know, it, it is true that we get to, like, go back and forth and see things from a completely different perspective, you know? And, and it's true. Like, we just can't, we don't live in their shoes. Like, we don't live in a man's life in their shoes as much as we may be tomboys or, you know, have both masculine and feminine energy. At the end of the day, we don't walk our lives as a man. So having that, you know, it really does make a difference, you know? I agree. And I don't have this as a question, but I want to point this out. One thing that I think works as like a negative um, with being friends with a man is that, like, I remember one of our mutual friends, I'm not going to say his name here, but I'll let you know afterwards. He one time <laughs> he said to me, he's like, Melissa, He's like, Melissa, I think like you're still single and like, you know, you have like you haven't been and connected with a man for like duration of time because we meshed you up. Like maybe you saw so much and you saw a male's perspective and like what males are capable of doing that now you're messed up. And I was like, listen, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just okay. But maybe that that adverse that adverse reaction of like seeing a man be a man as a friend. Yeah. And you that you don't really see when you are the you know the woman in his life yeah it, it kind of shows you a different side of what they're capable of doing I, th- I think we do have um that caution I probably I think I know who you're talking about anyway but because we because we've gone many years like you know you guys are scumbags right or saying that just to various friends like you know this is complete scumbaggery like it's it's just ridiculous and then so we do look especially if any of their friends tried to talk to us, we were like, hell no, we know what they're capable of. So it's like, not only do we not date our friends, but their friends, we were like, hell no. But yeah, so I do think that's right because there's a certain level of, I know what you guys are capable of. I know what you got, some of you, not all of them, but some of you guys will say directly to someone's face in front of us and we'll all just be looking like, oh, this is the story. Now we got to go along with this story, you know? So it's like that perspective of things. Yeah, I can see that. Like, yeah, we we were exposed to a lot because, but that's, a, it's actually a blessing too because we probably know a lot of mm-hmm. random stuff that most people are like, I would never say that around my female friends or I would never say that to my boyfriend. I'm like, yo, if you saw the stuff we saw, like, or if you heard the stuff we heard, like unfiltered, like it wasn't like they were trying to say, oh, be quiet, Melissa and Nadira are here. No, it's like maybe if some other chicks yeah. came around, but you and I were never spared, like in that <laughs> regard. It was like, 
And it was times where I was just like, do you guys not see us like as girls? Like, you know, we're still women here, right? And they're like, yeah, but y'all are y'all. And it was just like, they moved on with their day. It was just like, okay, well, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like clearly. Yeah. And and, and if anything, I actually, in in an an opposing side to that, I also saw like on a one-on-one basis with each of them, right? Like I saw their vulnerability. Like I saw them, you know, tapping into things that, are not manly man things, okay. but it's part of who they were that they felt comfortable showing me. And it also like also taught me that men are not just savages, right? Like men are men can be compassionate. They can be very respectful. They are not trying to hump you. They, right. you know what I mean? Like they actually t- taught me their character and how men can have character if they respect you. They had to be. It really had to do less about them and more about me right. when it came to men. And I, um, so it gave me confidence. Yeah. And I think also like we've watched them, like most of them fall in love, you know, have losses in their family life. So yeah, you're definitely right about that. You can see it's not just so, you know, this souped up guy, like, oh, you know, he's a scumbag or whatever. No, you can watch people go through phases and understand that both men and women have phases in their life. You know, you can be compassion and be the perfect father. I don't care what you were in the past, but like the first perfect father and son to your, you know, your parents or your new kids or, you know, have that compassion to your your spouse and just show a different side. Because we really have seen most of our friends just in the time we've known each other, 20 some odd years, grow from like teens, crazy, wilding out to adults who are mature, who fell in love, who, you know, who've had kids, you know, have had losses. Had... So you can see a full spectrum. And I think maybe that's why we don't think maybe guys and girls are that different because we all have the same masculine and feminine energy, things that people would see as feminine energy, like taking care of kids or loving kids. I've seen, I grew up with a father who was like that. So my father was very much, um, a, like a caring, you know, compassionate person. So, and that could be, I guess for me, I grew up in a household where my father and my mother were both had friends of the opposite sex, you know? And it wasn't like anybody was hiding it. My father was like, I'm going out with so-and-so and I'm taking the kids. And we would be with his female friends and him. So, and the same with my mother. So it was never, I guess growing up, I didn't see it as you had to do X, Y, and Z to be a friend with someone because, and our friends be, are fully faceted the same way I grew up with my parents. They were to me fully faceted. Like they had all these different aspects to them that were, you know, not the social norm. Cause that, that's a joke I always make with you. Like my mother didn't cook, my mother didn't clean. And you know, she didn't do the whole homemaker thing. She's not very, I don't know what quintessential motherly, but she's my mother. And my father was very warm and squishy, kind of like quintessential father. He cooked, he did all this stuff that what people would assume their mother did. So I guess it's kind of like a role reversal. And for their time period, that was definitely not normal. But I grew up like that. So me, I never saw it as abnormal. And, you know, maybe other people have that same, the ones who can be friends a lot, they didn't have, their parents may not have had that, you know, that issue with, you know, the opposite sex or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's opposing to me because I I didn't grow up with that. My parents were definitely very much in their role, um, and, and still I just knew I could change it. Like I just always knew like I had to live the life that I saw yeah. forever and make my life to be whatever I wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, so that that's that's valuable too. So. What we have learned is that you can never be friends with an ex without having sexual tension and sex. Actually, me and Adara really didn't need to unlearn it because right. somehow we just knew. <laughs> right. Um, so having someone see you beyond your sexual nature is a superpower. Yes, a power. This can be this this can take form in using your energy to communicate you as the human rather than you as the woman or man. Energy is impactful and can really set the boundary for you. So, so much so that the respect takes lead. I believe once a man values and respects you more than the sex, well, you have a lifetime friendship. As for friends with an ex, really valuing the experience with a person and the connection you had 
you had and built before the breakup is key. Lead to learn from it and see past the the semantics of what occurred and focus on what brought you guys together from the start. Disclaimer, not everyone deserves your friendship, whether with an ex or not. So choose wisely. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you, for, thank you, Natera, for doing this. This is so awesome. Exactly what I expected. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember, comment, share your thoughts and opinions of what you think of what we discussed. And until next time, later. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe and follow on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube at Relations Podcast via the Diary of MR. M as in Melissa, R as in Rosario. And now, the best part here are the after credits a message from my co host. So, overall, um, my experience with having platonic. Friends of the opposite sex has been very rewarding. Um, Just in general, it's helped me define how I view relationships, marriage, jealousy, and react to anger. It allows me to see a larger or more complete picture of various situations and reflect them in an objective manner. I think more people um, have opened themselves up to me in general because I have a more objective way of thinking about uh, you know, opposite sex and relationships and things like that. Um, so I found through conversations, outings, friendships, um, that I can see things in different perspectives. And it's not only, let's say, my way or the highway. So I, I would say my biggest takeaway um, from being friends with the opposite sex is just to respect boundaries, respect who they are as a person, and respect what they bring to the table and expect them to do the same for you.